Hi and welcome to Tony's Cool Tools on this first day of 2023. Like the title says, are you looking at buying a tractor in 2023 or just want to get some more information and do some research? Hopefully this video will shed some light for you and give you more information to make an educated decision. This is not a cheap purchase for sure. And I'm going to answer the question, why pick a coyote? Well, before you start your search, you're going to need to ask two questions. The first one is, what am I going to be doing with this tractor? There's a lot of different needs. Are you going to be farming, digging a pond, doing property maintenance? Do you need it for snow removal? Are you putting in food plots? So as you can see, there's a lot of different needs for a tractor. And question number two, what kind of attachments are you looking to put on your tractor, both front and rear? And how much power do you need? Here's a couple examples of what I'm talking about. If you're thinking of using a front-mounted snowblower or a belly mower, you're going to need a midpoint PTO, which is not standard for most tractors. So you either have to special order it or it came in with it and you're lucky enough to get it with a mid-mounted PTO. And the other question was power. How many horsepower do you need? Let me give you an example there as well. If you're buying a chipper, there's a minimum horsepower at your PTO. Now don't confuse the horsepower of the tractor to the horsepower of the PTO. They're two different ones. You have to check the specs of the tractor to see what your PTO horsepower is. This particular Coyote is a CK4010. It's a 40 horsepower. It's actually 39.6 horsepower, but the PTO horsepower is 33.3. So as you can see, there is a difference. And you have to keep that into consideration for the attachments that you buy for the PTO. Otherwise, you're going to be stressing your tractor. I was extremely fortunate to buy my first tractor, which was a New Holland 1925. It was a 34 horsepower diesel. The person selling it had a ton of attachments that came with it. So I was extremely lucky to end up with a lot of attachments for my first tractor. And I learned a lot. And I'll explain why I upgraded. Very similar to cars, there are so many brands of tractors out there. The two majors, John Deere and Kubota. But after that, you have TYM, Branson, LM, you have Massey Ferguson. So many different brands out there. So it's hard to choose. But I will say one thing you should be looking at is one, where is it in location to your house? Yes, you can buy a tractor out of state or you can buy it two, three, four hours away, but then service is a big issue. And let me explain why. My dealer is 17 miles away. If I have him come and pick up my tractor, it's $250 one way to pick up my tractor. That could get costly. And naturally, the other consideration you have is, let's say you have a trailer or a car hauler. You have to take into consideration the width, the length, and the weight of that tractor, and does it fit the specs of that trailer? I had an issue with the trailer that I had and had to upgrade. So as you can see, there's a lot of decisions that you have to make before you even sign the papers for the tractor. Well, enough talking. Let's check out this CK4010 SE. Now the 10 series Coyote tractors are the most popular ones that Coyote has. They come in 26, 35, and 40 horsepower. And everything we're gonna cover is identical for all three models. And the SE models come fully loaded. So there's just a few accessories that I put on here after the fact that were options. And I'll call those out as we go through the tractor. So we're gonna start off with the tires now. There are four types of tires that they offered. The standard ag tire, the turf tire, the R4 industrial, and when I purchased my tractor in 2020, they just released the new R14 tire. I was very skeptical about it, but after 300 hours and two winners, I'm very pleased with them and extremely satisfied with how they handle both on the turf and in the snow. And as you can see, I don't have any chains on them. Here's a closer look at them, both front and rear. They are a hybrid between the R4 and Ag tires. One other comment about the tires. I filled mine with beet juice. You can also use windshield wiper fluid. And one thing, because the tires are the lowest point of the tractor, 
when you fill the tires with liquid, it lowers your tractor center of gravity. And the other thing is, you're adding ballast, which you really need if you're lifting heavy items. Now regarding the bucket, or the loader, whichever you want to call it, it comes in two different sizes, 60 inch or 66 inch. You could get a 72 if you want as well, but that's additional. Though the loader is ready to use as you get it, one of the things that I did to prolong the bucket life was I purchased this additional bar. It extends the life of the cutting edge, so I'm not having to have one welded on here. This was about $250. You can put it on yourself if you want to buy it later, but I just had the dealer put it on. There was no charge for it. And make sure when you do get a bucket that you get a level indicator. Most manufacturers, this is an option and you have to pay extra for it. This attachment is invaluable when you do dirt or gravel work. One other thing to consider is how is your bucket attached to your arm? Most of the newer tractors come with the skid steer type quick attach that just lifts up and you can change them out. I'm constantly changing my pallet forks to the bucket every day, so this is invaluable. One of the main reasons I didn't go with John Deere was the use of their proprietary quick attach. I did not want to have to buy all John Deere products. I wanted to be able to go anywhere I wanted to and get the quick attach. I think now they are offering it, but when I was looking for it, they didn't offer it. When buying either a new or used tractor, one nice thing is to have these recessed grease fittings. They're protected. Not so much up here, but when you get down here and you're doing gravel or dirt and you don't have those, it could snap that zerk off and give you more work. Here's the first accessory that I added to the tractor that does not come with the SE. And that's right over there. It's a tank type heater that you plug in. Wires are right over here. If you keep your tractor outside in the cold weather, this tank type heater really makes a difference in starting during the cold weather. The other option that I had the dealer put on, and it was extra, was the third function valve. I find it invaluable, and that's one of the reasons that I had to upgrade from my previous tractor. I wanted to use a grapple and a directional plow so I could go left or right with the plow, and I can do that with the third function valve. The other thing I wanted to point out was the hydraulic plumbing here. As you can see, it's steel tubing right here, and they did a great job with the plumbing and the block right here for holding everything together on both sides. The advantage here with the metal, no dry rot. The big issue is if you store your tractor outside. And it's the little things like this braid that they put on their hose to protect it from chafing. And yes, it does come with a grill guard that you can position downward. Coyote is one of the few manufacturers that still offers a metal hood. Easy access to open. And it does have telescoping hydraulic arms to hold it up. As you can see, super, super easy to work on here. You have your Donaldson air filter, interstate battery. And why interstate battery is so important is they're everywhere. You can find one and get service if it's a warranty issue. So if you do your own maintenance, as you can see, super easy to access your oil filter, your fuel filter, and your dipstick. Everything's easily accessible there, along with your axle fluid here. One of the nice things about the Coyote fuel filter is you have a sight glass for the water. And standard for 2020, Coyote installed the heater kit on this so that the fuel doesn't gel on you. And if by accident you do run this dry, you can prime this right here with this pump by just pushing it multiple times and getting fuel in the filter. You have a real nice quick connect here for, to remove your loader arm. It is on the outbound side of the tractor. Some of them are positioned over here on some of the models, but this particular one is positioned there. All the third function mechanicals are located right here. So I thought I was gonna be smart and order a step for this side as well. And I went to put it in here. The third function box is sticking out too far. So I have to weld a plate in there to bring it back out here. Now some of you will say, why do you need a step on this side? 
as you get older, it's nice to have it so that you can get on either side. And whether you love them or hate them, this comes standard with not one, but two mirrors, which for me, I wouldn't be without them. And you can pull these in so that if you're in the woods, you're not gonna break them. The other item that is an additional cost for most of the other manufacturers are grab bars. Not only do you get one, you get two. And it is extremely convenient when hauling your butt up and down this a lot of times. Now the Coyote has a two pedal system, forward and reverse. My new Holland and a number of the tractors out there have the treadle pedal where you just hold it and go back and forth. I had both of them and I like both of them, so that's not a big issue. Some people do not like the treadle pedal for whatever reason. As you can see, I have my size 12 Fasia boots here and there's plenty of room here for me to move and have space to rest my leg. Now, personally, I like the positioning of the joystick on the Coyote. It's really close to my body and this has the third function attachment right here. So I can operate everything here Pushing these buttons opens or closes my grapple or moves the plow left or right. This tractor has the float function by just pushing it all the way forward. In addition, this little blue lever here is a lock so that if I have the loader filled with something and I lift it up, I can lock that in so that if I do get in on this side and hit the control, it won't drop the bucket. But this blue lever is not to be confused as a lock to lock in the loader in the up position. It will drop down over time. So this only locks it from jarring the arm. Now we'll cover the controls on this side. This is your PTO switch here. And it has two options. I can operate it in a manual mode and I can operate it automatic. I'll explain that in a bit. Here's your three point lever to raise or lower whatever accessory you have on. And the SE models have two sets of hydraulics in the back. Having two hydraulic links is beneficial. I can either have a top link that is hydraulically operated and a chute, a directional chute on my snowblower. So I can do that. Or at some point I might want to get a backhoe and these hydraulic ports would be beneficial. Now this does come with a very dinky and cheap toolbox, but I keep some essential tools in here it's handy to store small items like latch pins or pliers or a small hammer there. I have an option to move this toolbox from the outbound to inbound. So if I wanted to take this toolbox and put it on the inside, I could do that. It does come with hazard lights. Some people hate these mounted up high like this, especially when you're going through the woods, you end up tearing them off. So you do have an option if you choose to tell your dealer and on the Coyote, there is a position right here for you to go ahead and change the location and have them mounted right here. The other thing Coyote does is give you an electrical pigtail system here so you can attach some lights and they're ready to go. You don't have to plumb them yourself. And one of the most important things on a tractor, the libation holder right here. This does come with an extremely comfortable seat. And as silly as it may sound, armrests are additional. In many cases, you only get one. The SE model comes with both armrests. It is a dual function chair. It goes forward and backwards. And it's hydraulic. And it's extremely springy here. I can change the suspension of this seat if I choose to by just lowering this and now it's not as buoyant. And the last thing I wanted to mention about the seat, it does come with a retractable safety belt and there is plenty of room for larger people. Now at your left heel, you have your differential lock, you have your two to four wheel drive and you have your speed control for your three point. So you can lower the speed, especially if you have heavy items on there like a chipper and shredder or ballast. There are two transmission options for the Coyote. The hydrostatic, which is what I have, or the shuttle shift. And it is a three speed, low, medium, and high. Or the way I remember it is load, mow, and highway. It does come with turn signals and headlights. And this manly horn. 
we're gonna have to change that this orange lever is a link pedal I'll actually show you and demonstrate how that works real beneficial when you're doing dirt work or gravel work this blue knob here is for your tilt steering real nice so you can adjust it anywhere you like the tractor does come with cruise control which is extremely nice when you're doing brush hog work and you can set the speed that you want and just let it go previously I showed you the PTO switch right here I mentioned that there were two options automatic or manual and what you do is right on the column here you have manual and automatic and what that is is if I'm using my chipper I just put it into the manual mode and not worry about it because I'm not lifting it up and lowering it like I would when I was brush mowing but if I am brush mowing a lot of times you know when you come to a turn you have to stop raise it and then make your turn and then lower it the nice thing about this auto PTO is you just lift your PTO and this automatically shuts the brush mower off and as soon as you lower it it engages it saves you a step here's your hazard switch and this is your DPF switch so in the event that this wants to regenerate I can press this down and it'll stop it from going for a while but I'll have to regenerate at some point lastly this orange lever is the emergency brake let me start it up and show you the dashboard here the one thing I really like about it is it's analog and not digital and while we're at it let me show you the link pedal by putting this on you can see that the link pedal light came on let me show you what that does normally when I want to go faster I have to push the accelerator and if I want to go faster I have to increase it by using the throttle lever here's the advantage of the link pedal by engaging it I do not have to use the throttle lever at all all I have to do is press down on the accelerator and the harder I press down the faster I go and as you can see when I release it the RPMs go down this is extremely beneficial when you're doing gravel or dirt work so you don't have to constantly play with your throttle lever let's check out the rear end of this coyote I definitely like the fuel tank on this better than on my New Holland which was up on the hood I do use a 12 volt fuel pump to load this with fuel and it is nine gallons here are the two sets of auxiliary hydraulics the blue one on this side black one on this side one nice thing is having a hinge shroud so you can push this out when you're putting your PTO shaft on the other tractor I had this was not movable it was in a fixed position sometimes it was difficult but with this it's really nice the drawbar comes standard with most of the tractors regardless of which brand of tractor you get I encourage you to get the deluxe link arm system that they have let me show you with this one here instead of having a turn buckle to move it which is extremely time consuming I pull the pin and I can move this back and forth the other thing that's real advantageous is I can a lot of times when we have an attachment in the field it's sometimes difficult to align it perfectly and if you don't have a quick hitch system it's a hit or miss with this by pushing it down I gain about three or four more inches here of adjustment not only that I can go up and down as well meaning less hassle on attaching attachments and when you're through all you do is it just pushes right in well I hope you found this video informative and it'll make you a better buyer when you go looking for your new tractor there's a lot of accessories out there that are available on some tractors but not on all so now you have a good idea so remember pass it forward make the world a better place and don't be a tool watch Tony's cool tools until I see you next time have a great day and a great year